I mean, I, I think and I understand from contacts in the intelligence world that Putin is rattled. He's really rattled. So, you know, when drones are flying over his presidential palace, admittedly he has a few of them, when uh, residential areas where his, I wouldn't say friends, but the oligarchs he relies on get hit, then absolutely that comes home. Really, for the last two and a half years, he's managed to keep the war at arm's length, but it is getting closer and closer to Moscow. And um, certainly the Kursk incursion ha has moved it closer. And I think until recently, the average rank and file in Russia knew little of it unless they knew somebody's, you know, son who'd been killed or injured. Um, and But that is getting more common. But now that even on the television, uh, which is media is so tightly controlled in Russia, there's nothing about this on Twitter. And, you know, when, when the Sun posts something on Twitter about this, it's not going to be read in Russia. But, you know, Telegram and other um, social media outlets are now sprouting this and Russia can't can't sort of, you know, keep the lid on everything. And even if its own TV stations are, are talking about it and nobody can deny that these drones, explosive drones are creating damage in Moscow. Everybody is, is seeing it. And, and actually, there are an awful lot of Russians posting on social media now their own experiences. So, yeah, what, what seems to be key uh, now is uh, to try to get the Russian on people to understand exactly what's going on in Ukraine. You know, for the majority of the two and a half years of this war, uh, the, the elite and the rich in, in Moscow have been pretty untouched by the war. It's not their young children who have been conscripted to the front and dying in their hundreds of thousands. Um, they have pretty much carried on their life as normal. True, they haven't been able to go to their super yachts in the Mediterranean, their ski chalets in the Alps uh, and, and their villas in the south of France. But ostensibly, life hasn't changed very much. And I think it is absolutely key um, for the West and Ukraine, that, that these are the people who are going to make a difference. Um, and I think that the hope is that um, they will remove the regime, remove Putin from within uh, rather than uh, from without. Uh, the war in Ukraine is, is not quite a stalemate. Um, obviously, Ukraine have made some really big gains in the Kursk region, but again, but down in the Donbass, um, the grinding um, daily sort of attacks from Russia uh, with the loss of huge amounts of life um, are making a little bit of progress. So uh, it would appear that unless there's some you know, strategic shift, this could grind on. But I hopefully the Ukrainians are thinking strategically and being advised by, no doubt, the Americans and ourselves to some extent on how best to get a resolution to this war. Putin is rattled. And the key thing that Biden and Starmer need to agree on Friday is to turn the screw and take all the shackles off uh, Ukraine. You know, Ukraine is, is, does, is designing its own missiles. Um, it's adapting its own drones to be able to do this sort of stuff. Now, the US in particular, and to a lesser extent, Britain has these capabilities already. You know, why on earth we're not giving them to Ukraine now to allow them to end this war as quickly as possible, you know, is slightly beyond me. The shackles off, you know, it's it's a bit like giving them a football team, but saying you can only have a goalkeeper. Um, you know, we should allow them to, you know, play with a full set of cards, as it were, the full team, um, because winning is the only thing that matters here. Um, you know, score draws and good losses. You know, this is war. This isn't a game of football or a game of cricket. So uh, we need to be all in and give them all they need to succeed. They've shown they've got the talent. Uh, they have fought like, you know, like nothing that we can imagine. Um, it's their national survival. They're our allies. We should back them to the hilt. Well, yes, I mean, the war is definitely hotting up in terms of in the last uh, month, six weeks, we've seen the Ukrainian offensive 
into uh, Western Russia. We've seen Russia responding quite forcefully with its own air bombardments onto Ukrainian civilians. I mean, across the country, they've been trying to hit uh, various Ukrainian targets. We've seen fierce fighting in the Donbass region, and now we're seeing Ukraine extending the war as far as it can go, uh, using its uh, sort of drone attacks uh, into Moscow to try and disrupt uh, ordinary life uh, in the Russian capital. Uh, I think it, it is a, a, a strong uh, move by Ukraine to take the fight uh, to Moscow. Um, it's designed to bring the war again to the attention of ordinary Russians to say things are not going well for you. And uh, Mr. Putin claimed this would be over in a week. It's now two and a half years and we're attacking your capital city. So what do you think about that? Do you not think there needs to be a change? Whether it'll achieve that change is another matter, but it is a statement of intent to say that Ukraine's going nowhere and will continue to uh, cause Russia problems uh, in this war of Putin's choosing. You know, your country's invaded in a major way for the first time since the Second World War. Um, and again, it's only been invaded because you've attacked someone else. So it's not as if it was a, an unprovoked uh, attack of aggression by the by the neighbour. It was, in fact, your aggression that sparked it. So things have gone badly wrong. And then your capital city being hit by significant numbers of drones. Again, it's a huge, huge embarrassment for Putin. Uh, and the more that happens, the more embarrassed is going to be and the more questions are going to start being raised about what the point of the war is and what the point of Putin uh, himself is, given that he seems like, incapable of protecting Russia uh, from uh, its, you know, it, it, the consequences of its own aggression. What Ukraine um, has been very successful at doing the last two months is to remind the West that the war can be won. Uh, there was a feeling, I think, that there was stalemate developing. Nobody knew what was happening. It was sort of drifting off the news. And Ukraine needed to take a risk. It needed to do something quite dramatic to remind the West of the ability of its ally on the ground to actually win the conflict. All it needs is for the West to do its bit and supply it with the weapons, with the missiles to actually do the job and finish uh, Putin's regime off in that way. Now, that is obviously going to be taken, uh, you know, uh, positively by the UK and US, where I'm, I would be hopeful that there will be a decision made very soon on the long range missiles issue, because it's clear that attacking Russia's drone and missile bases will help alleviate the pressure on not simply Ukraine civilians, which is important, but also on a number of the Ukrainian military installations that are being attacked as well from long distance. And these are fair targets in war. These are, um, you know, sites that are, that are you know, kind of uh, being used for offensive purposes. Uh, and currently they're simply off limits because we're not allowing Ukraine to use the weapons it's got to attack them. That needs to change right now. The Ukrainians need every bit of help they can get uh, to reflect their own bravery, to reflect the risks they've taken, to show that those aren't going to be punished, but instead are going to be rewarded by the support needed to bring this war uh, to a close on terms that will be fair to the Ukrainians, which is, of course, the only thing we should be interested in. Putin needs to, uh, you know, his forces need to withdraw from Russia yeah. in exchange, obviously, for a Ukrainian withdrawal from Russia. Um, and, you know, there needs to be reparations paid as well for, for the crimes he's committed. Uh, in Ukraine. Anything short of that is going to legitimize aggression, it's going to legitimize the use of force, and that is not a message that we can have being sent out, given the number of predators who are out there uh, looking to see the outcome of this conflict before they launch their own potential attacks on their neighbours.